We live in a visual world. If you are ever on social media sites or glance through a newspaper, you have probably noticed that you pay a lot more attention if there is something visual. A photo, cool font designs, infographics, you know. And like it or not, most oral presentations, or speeches, can benefit from the appropriate inclusion of good quality visual aids. The term visual aids, however, is dated. Depending on the topic, oral presentations may include audio, like a speech explaining about four-part harmony in barbershop quartets, or audiovisual material, such as including a video demonstrating how male hummingbirds manipulate the sounds of their flying wings to attract their mates. Yep, that's really what they do. And that's why the term visual aids has been expanded to presentation aids, the term we will be using for our discussion on using aids in oral presentations involving the use of computers, or computer-mediated communication. This video will focus on a brief definition of presentation aids, a bit more detail of why you might want to use them in your oral presentations, and how they fit into the communication model. Finally, to bring the discussion to present-day technology, we'll talk about three oral communication contexts where you might use computer-generated presentation aids like PowerPoint, Keynote, Prezi, or the like. We'll start with something I hope you already know. What is a presentation aid? Technically, a presentation aid is something other than the words of a source, a speaker or author, that can be used to assist in communicating the source's message to the receiver or audience. Simply put, however, presentation aids are anything that can aid a presentation, such as an object or model, a portable illustration board, flip charts, even handouts or audio files. And the word aid is an important one, which we'll get to a bit later. When you are selecting and designing your aids, it's important to consider whether you really need them or not. So, why might you want to use presentation aids? They should be more than just pretty pictures or sounds, and those pretty pictures or sounds might even detract from your presentation. The primary reason for using presentation aids is that they do just what their name says. They aid your presentation by adding clarity, helping your audience understand what you are explaining. I told you that word would be important. Another reason is that they appeal to a variety of learning styles. Regardless of if you accept the learning styles theory that there are auditory, visual, and kinesthetic learners, you'll probably agree that some of us prefer to get our information visually, seeing, while others prefer oral means, hearing. Adding aids to a spoken presentation appeals to both of these preferred styles. Additionally, several research studies conclude that the combination of both visual and auditory messages aid, see there's that word again, aid, aid in retaining the message and being able to recall it later. The U.S. Department of Labor sponsored a study that found the combination of oral or spoken information with visual information increased retention significantly. We recall six times as much than if we got the information orally. Further, if the visual image is designed well, it will save time in the explanation as the audience can see what you are talking about. And finally, again, if presentations are well designed, they can enhance the audience's perception of the speaker's credibility. But you've probably thought of another very important reason, the same reason newspapers and social media sites use visual images to augment the written word, and radio uses sound in addition to the human voice. Presentation aids add variety and interest. We are more likely to pay attention to a presentation if there are good visuals to go along with it. If you think about it, when you are delivering a speech in front of a live audience, you, your gestures, movement, and facial expressions also serve to add interest to your presentation. In essence, your non-oral behavior acts as an aid to your oral or spoken message. However, if your audience can't see your face or body, like you can't see mine right now, oh, hi there, the only things we see are the presentation aids. Let's expand the discussion to more than a formal oral presentation as we go into how presentation aids fit into the communication process, how we use them when we communicate in everyday situations as well as oral presentations. You may recall that a simple model of communication demonstrates that in order for someone to get a message, that message has to be transmitted through a channel. The channel, sometimes called a transmitter, is how the message gets from a source to the receiver. 
the channel being used, face-to-face, -face, radio, computer screen, and so on, will dictate how that message will be designed, including what types of presentation aids you can use. If you are limited to an audio channel, like a telephone, you can't draw a map or show a picture. If your channel is limited to visual, like a billboard, you won't be able to add sound. If you are presenting a speech in a facility without computer projection equipment, your aids will be limited to objects, posters, and maybe audio files that you can play on a portable media device, assuming you have the speakers to enable your audience to hear them. Oh, and let's not forget the receivers, who are the reason you are communicating your message. You need to think of them when you choose your aids. An aid that works well for kindergartners might not work as well in a training session at work. There is one more aspect of the communication model that comes into play. Noise. Noise is anything that can interfere with the communication process. While it can happen anywhere in the communication process, our concern here is the noise faced by the receivers. Don't make the mistake of assuming that noise is only sound. It can be visual, such as a person walking by your office or an email notification, or even something you smell. And it can often be internal noise, like when you think of all the things you could be doing other than watching this video. There is a lot more involved in the communication model, but that's enough for our discussion. The underlying theme is that you have to consider the entire communication process, specifically the channel, possible noise, and definitely the receivers, when you are selecting, designing, and using your presentation aids. And this becomes particularly important when you are using computer-generated presentation aids, like PowerPoint, for your oral presentations. Think about three common contexts or situations where computers are used in the process of delivering oral presentations, face-to-face -face using computer projection, live via computer, or video via computer. For our discussion, we are excluding oral-only presentations, like radio or podcasts. As these situations involve using a computer as part of the channel, they are often called computer-mediated communication, or CMC for short. Occasionally, you'll hear this referred to as EMC, or electronically mediated communication. Even though they are all using the computer as the channel, the receivers are operating in different environments, so each situation requires a different approach when using presentation aids. Face-to-face -face is a traditional oral presentation, a speech delivered live to an audience, with a computer monitor projecting your aids. For live via computer, imagine a voiceover PowerPoint live presentation where you are presenting to an audience who can't see you or only sees a small image of you in a tiny webcam window. Oh, hello again. Video via computer would be a presentation using computer-generated aids to maintain interest while delivering the message in a static, think not live, setting. Like this video, even if you can still see the source in a webcam window. Oh, hi again. While there are several considerations, we'll discuss four. How much the audience is invested in the presentation, the audience's center of attention, availability of interactivity, and the distraction level. A live audience in a face-to-face -face setting is likely to be invested in the presentation. They are much more likely to pay attention. And the speaker can usually tell if the audience is paying attention. And the audience knows it. Think of students trying not to let their instructors know they are having difficulty staying awake. The audience doesn't want the speaker to know they aren't listening, so they try to pay attention. There is an element of spontaneity involved. The communication is happening simultaneously. The speaker can also ask and answer questions to involve the audience, as well as adapt to nonverbal feedback. In a live via computer like VoiceOver PowerPoint presentation, the audience is still likely to be invested, but less so. They might be able to ask questions when they wish, and as the communication is occurring simultaneously, it feels interactive. It doesn't feel like a canned presentation. But the speaker isn't the center of attention, the computer screen is. And it's easy for the audience to be distracted by their smartphones, people walking through, and if they're like me and use multiple monitors, emails or other work. In a videoed presentation with no live audience, the audience is often less invested, at least at the moment. It's more of a one-way activity as the communication isn't happening simultaneously. The audience can't ask questions until after the presentation, if even then. They are also much more easily distracted by people talking to them, background noise, etc. 
but don't feel they have to hide their lack of attention from the speaker. After all, the speaker can't even tell if the audience is paying attention. If they think they missed something important, they know that all they have to do is click the rewind button or rewatch the presentation and get the information. But they rarely do. Okay, you now know what presentation aids are and why you might want to use them. And with an understanding of how these aids fit into the communication model, as well as the main differences between the CMC channels where you could use computer-generated aids, you have an important key to becoming an effective communicator. You now know you have to adapt your presentation aids to various situations. The question is, how? But that is a topic for another video.